In the previous video, we were working on some quick chrome effects on an MG. If you've not seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description. But one of the viewers of that video uh, posed me a question about layer management because it seems that in Affinity Designer, every time you create a new object, Affinity creates a new layer for it. So on a complicated illustration, uh, which I like doing, you end up with lots and lots of layers. And yeah, it was just a question really of how do I manage it and is there any way around it? So in this video, I'm gonna look at a couple of different ways of, of managing it and uh, hopefully it will make doing complex illustrations a bit easier for you. Now, I recently went to a classic car auction, uh, got some great pictures of all sorts of different stuff. Uh, this is a super light wheel from a Ford Capri. Uh, all I've done is I've opened the, the photograph in Affinity Photo. So let's just go in there. So you've just got a background layer. Uh, and then what we're going to do is just pick up this brush tool and I'll just draw over the top. And nothing really is happening on the background there. It's just showing you the changes that I've made to the image. So that's now embedded into that photograph. So let's just undo that. Let's create a new layer, a pixel layer. And then I'll do the same thing again. Every time I make a change, it's all adding to that same pixel layer, which I think is fairly standard for um, bitmap software. So let's just get rid of that and move over to Affinity Designer. Over in Affinity Designer, things work a little differently though. So same image, and we're gonna just, I'll just open the layers so you can see. It's just the background photograph. And what happens with this is, I've just got the, the vector brush tool selected. So if I just start creating objects, you'll see in the layers, it's created a new layer for every time I've lifted off and gone back onto the screen, which for simple illustrations is fine, but you can imagine doing grills if I was doing like reflections and, and spokes and all that kind of stuff, it quickly gets out of hand. So what I would normally do is if I just, with the top one selected with two, two fingers, uh, tap on the bottom one to select all of that. I'd come up into uh, here and click on group and that gives me two layers, but I can expand this by tapping on that and gives me all my individual things that I can I can go back in and, and edit as I want. But I think what Affinity wants you to do in this instance, if I just delete all that, is create a new layer first, the vector layer, and then you can create as you need. When you go back into the layers, you'll see that you've got layer one and everything's inside that layer. Now, I'm not sure what the difference is between that and grouping. Uh, and the problem for me is I've never done it that way. And I think what would happen for me after like two years of using this is I would create a new layer, do that, and then I'd go off onto something else and I'd start I'd start um, working on, on this bit and I'd start working on, on this bit, and then suddenly I'd realize I'm still on layer one and I've just added all this stuff in, and now I've gotta go change it all and, and, and moving things around. And so I think for me, I just carry on as I, as I have done and, and group as I go. Um, but let me show you one of my more complicated illustrations and I'll, I'll, it'll make more sense. So my first example is Porsche 924. Uh, I'll just open up the layer stack so you can see what's going on. I've labeled the main main groups. I usually start with bodywork and let's just open that one. And then because that's like the silhouette of the car, that gives you the main footprint of your illustration and I'll add into the foreground of that. I've not labeled everything on this one because I'm getting to a point where I know kind of what I'm doing. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting a bit better, but I don't know what I'm doing. But you your layer stack becomes the uh, roadmap to the illustration. You can tap on things if you're not sure what it is and it all highlights it on, on, the, uh, on the screen. So you don't really need to highlight stuff. And you can break things down too much and make it 
over complicated. Uh, if you go into the rear wheel, you'll see the same kind of thing. It's just one big um, group with everything in it. And I'll just go around the car making groups as I as I see fit. So I've got one with um, outer glow highlights. So I'll turn that on. That's just all the little little bits. You've just got to remember when you add a highlight to make sure you've got this group highlighted. And in the case of this Land Rover Defender, uh, it doesn't actually look as complicated as the Porsche, but there is an awful lot going on, uh, a lot more intricate details. So I'll just open the layer stack. Uh, and we can go into like uh, glass house, for example, if I just turn that off and on, you can see that's all the glass on the car and I can open that. Uh, there's some of the objects are just chucked in because it's just, um, you know, they're easy enough to find. And then there's like sub, subsections like uh, skylight it's got its own group so I can open that and edit those it just makes it a little easier to find uh, that, that's probably the first drawing that I've really thought about it with um, conscientiously like thought about how to group things together just in case I've got to send this to somebody who has to make their own edits on it um, makes it a bit easier for them to find their way around so I hope that's answered the question uh, and given you some pointers on how to manage your layers in Affinity Designer on the iPad. My plan is for the future to make the drawings a little bit simpler. I've got kind of, as I've grown with uh, Affinity, I've kind of got carried away. Uh, I don't want to be making videos with, you know, how to how to make an illustration with 1,300 layers and in just 40 hours or something like that. I need to, I need to sort of rein it in a little bit, you know, um, and make something a bit more accessible again. But um, I'll get, I enjoy doing it and I get carried away and that's, that's where we are. So if, um, if you found this video helpful, please consider giving me a like and maybe even subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.